Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome, come in, welcome on in to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. I hope you lot are all doing well today. I really do hope that Chelsea are playing in the FA Cup. Mmm, exciting, different, you know, good. That's right, Chelsea are facing the Blunt Blades tomorrow in the FA Cup, and we can hope for a decent amount of rotation from Tommy Took, but we can hope for, not necessarily expect. Anyway, the Blades season's over, they've been relegated, this could be the last sort of bastion of goodness in their existence this season, so maybe they'll turn up. And you know, stranger things have happened in the world where people get slapped about by, uh, yeah. Anyway, subscribe if you're new to football therapy and you want to have more content, you know, bell notifications icon must be clicked. And if you want to show your support and let me know that you're enjoying the content and you want more, please do drop a like. It's very helpful and kind of you. Today's video is brought to you by One Football. That's right, lovely jubbly, my sponsor, One Football are a completely free service and it's very good. One Football is an application you can have on your mobile phone, on either Android or iOS. Totally free, keeps you plugged in with alerts regarding Chelsea Football Club or indeed any football club in the world and gives you any piece of information you need to know. Click the link in the description on this video to go check out One Football completely free if you haven't done so already do yourself that favor all right then let's roll into this match preview so Chelsea are playing Sheffield Chris Wilder is now gone he either got canned or walked away I'm not entirely sure what's going on but I think for a long long time he was unhappy with the club and it's kind of sad really man because he's done such incredible work to get them where they are they finished like you know mid table last season or mid upper table exciting way of playing football with superb whip for overlapping centre halves you know that was trendy to talk about that for a while and it was kind of sad and disappointing how it all went tits up but it certainly did they couldn't score goals they kept losing they kept losing actually let's be fair while they were losing under Chris Wilder they were only losing by the odd goal they weren't like undeserved you know they weren't getting undeserved losses but you know, they weren't getting battered. Last time out, they lost 5-0. Here's the team that got slapped about 5-0 by Leicester. And uh, one notable thing there would be any Finampadu own goal, which is things you hate to see, of course. Chelsea have not granted Sheffield United the ability to play Ethan Ampadu in this fixture. Remember when Chelsea played Derby in the Cup? I remember it well at Stamford Bridge. A surreal experience where both sets of fans were singing Super Frankie Lampard. It was lovely, actually. They they played well, we somehow snuck past them that day. Was it a Cesc Fabregas goal? Or had Fabregas gone by then? Anyway, whatever, I remember Derby, they were they lost 3-2, I think they scored own goals as well. Anyway, that day, Chelsea gave Derby a special uh, permission, I suppose, to play both for Kaio Tomori and Mason Mount against Chelsea, despite them being uh, low knees, of course. But Frank Lampard asked the club and said, look, we'll be good for their development. Can they play? It being super Frankie Lampard, they were like, yes, they can play. And they did. And they only narrowly lost and probably should have won. Of course, they also beat Manchester United at Old Trafford that season under Frank Lampard. So, you know, things were okay in the end for them. But Chelsea have said no to letting Ethan Ampadu play. And maybe that's probably a good thing. You don't want to traumatize them anymore. You know, not that Chelsea score a lot of goals. I doubt they'll ship five in this game because we're more reserved as a team. So, Chelsea will be a gargantuan favourite to win this game, of course. Because we played so well, we've only conceded two goals. One was an Antonio Rudiger, own goal. And they've been absolutely awful and slapped about 5-0 last time out. I don't think that will, they'll perform that badly again for this game. I think they'll rally a little bit for their own sort of, you know, self-respect. But we should win. I'm going to do a score prediction, but I've also made a predicted lineup that hopefully you guys will find interesting so let's switch over the screens and take a look at that now right i've gone for a 3 4 1 2 as opposed to the 3 4 2 1 and you can probably already see i've made some changes and i'm going to talk you through those changes right now kepa in goal we've seen him start in a cup and a premier league game i think under thomas tuchel certainly threw him into a premier league game when we didn't expect it i do expect him to play this game and i think honestly that will be it for the rest of the season now because i think Sheffield in bad form, don't really score many goals. He does want to keep the confidence of Kepa high. I think he'll play him probably in this game, and then that will be it. You know, despite the opposition in the next round, should we qualify him. 
I think that'll be it for Kevin, but I've got a feeling he'll start this game in goal. The back three in front of him, I've brought Christensen back in before we go into the international break, because hopefully the reason why he was absent against Atletico was probably not that radical. It might have been a stomach thing. So to keep him warm, I think you'd play him in this game. I think as Pilaqueta starts as he always starts because it's the captain on the pitch and Thomas Tuchel sees a lot of importance in captains. And I brought in Kurt Zuma for a little bit of rotation in the back line over Antonio Rudiger, who's played a lot for Chelsea and is a few years older and stuff. So that completes my back line. For the midfield engine room, I brought in Jorginho, who of course sat out last time against Atletico. Madrid with a suspension so before the break I think he should play as well you know give um both N'Golo Kante and Kovacic a rest in this game because I'm going to partner him up with the player we're all yearning to see and that is Billy Gilmore of course Thomas Tuchel has spoken about him a few times he says he views him as the fourth choice centre mid but because of like, how things have gone he's just been rotating his preferred three in Kovacic, Jorginho and Kante so he can feel a bit unfortunate uh, Billy Gilmore, but Thomas Tuchel has reiterated that he was the one who didn't want him to go on loan. He's like, look, you're, I can see you're an excellent player. I want you in the squad as an option training with us, which probably made Gilmore feel good. But, you know, Scotland coming up, the Euros, I don't know how to feel about that. Still, we should absolutely expect to see him in this game. If he truly is fourth choice, uh, and you know, look at the profile of game, he has to start for me. So, Billy Gilmore and Jorginho in the midfield. Right wing back, I think it'll be quite easy. I think it'll be Callum Hudson Adoy who will start, who's you know, not started the last game. I feel like we'll have most of the ball, so we can afford to have quite an offensive wing back. Rest Reese James in this game, and I think Callum Hudson Adoy will start in the right wing back position. When it comes to left wing back, I've gone for Chilwell slash Emerson. I think Chilwell is in Tuchel's thoughts. I think he likes him. I think he realizes his quality as this England international. But at the same time, Thomas Tuchel has come out a lot and says, Emerson trains really well. He's got an excellent attitude and I really like him. And the fact how he came on, scored the second goal against Atletico Madrid, you know, which was an important goal. Well, you know, the game with the tie was over, but imagine if Atletico scored there and then we had a prangy like set piece afterwards. So it was good. It made the tie look better, that Emerson goal. I have a feeling he might reward him by starting him in this game and then maybe bringing Chilwell on as a substitute. Do you know what I mean? So between the two of them, I think those, that position will be taken. I think Alonso will be left out uh, entirely for this tie, and I think that makes sense. False nine slash number 10 in this game. And of course, for me, it has to be Mason Mount. When there's a lot of rotation around you, you need one of your like, you know, leading names in terms of industry, knowing how the manager wants to play setting a president on the field for effort, you know, setting an example. Mason Mount didn't play against Atletico Madrid. I absolutely think he starts this game in the sort of 10 false nine position. And we'll sort of look to him for inspiration in this game, I believe. Anyway, up top, on front of Mason Mount, I've gone for sort of a double striker formation or the two forwards in this two call shape. One would be Olivier Giroud. I think he'll be brought into this game. He was a little bit unlucky not to feature lately. I think it's solely down to a player profile thing rather than ability. Of course, Tuchel was right to play the front three he did against Atletico. Tactically, it was perfect. It was nothing against Giroud, who scored that wonder goal in the first leg. But I think you can't really rely on him to score wonder goals. Thomas Tuchel recognised that and played the front three that he did. But in this game, why not play Olivier Giroud, get him in there, and next to him, I'm going to put a little bit of pace to run in behind, not in the shape of Timo Werner, although let's be honest, none of us would be surprised if Timo Werner starts this game, because, you know, I think Tuchel just wants to get him goals. But I've put Christian Pulisic, who probably deserves to start in this game, an amazing player in terms of his ability, we need to get him firing again, so I've put... Pulisic up with Olivier Giroud. Right, let's talk about the game a little bit more and do a score prediction. Now, this is a difficult one. Of course, Sheffield United are coming off a 5-0 loss. They can't play Ethan Ampadu. You could, you know, whether that's a good or bad thing at the moment in terms of chemistry and morale back there, I'm not so sure. But they will absolutely be looking long and hard at themselves after that 5-0 loss that was pretty tragic. So they will be gunning for a bit of self-respect here and playing football for their own pride and dignity. So I don't think they're going to ship five. I think Chelsea will rotate quite a lot, which, you know... It, it could be a <laughs> could be a problem. I would be worried with a shifted defence and Kepper in goal, and that's no disrespect to Kepper in terms of his ability. He is a good goalkeeper. I like him. I just think there's something to be said about continuity at the back. So I think 
I don't think we're going to concede a goal because they're so blunt up front and lacking self-confidence. I think they'll function better, Sheffield, but I don't necessarily think they'll score. I think Chelsea will win. I don't think it's going to be an exciting high-octane game. You know what? I was going to say 2-0, but I'm going to crank it up a little bit. There's going to be some players there trying to prove themselves. I'm going to say 3-0 to Chelsea. So, yeah, not quite a 5-0 that Leicester did, but that was a collapse. I think Chelsea will control the game, make Sheffield come out eventually, and they'll suffer for that. And I think Chelsea are going to win 3-0 in the FA Cup tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too overconfident age. We're just beating Atletico Madrid. We'll, we'll beat Sheffield. Let me know your score predictions down in the comment section and also changes to my lineup. And anything you want, let's start up a conversation, my sweet friends. Thanks for stopping by. Please do drop a like if you want to show your support and subscribe, of course. If you're new and you... Yeah, I can't talk English. If you're new and you want to, I'm going to end the video there. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'm going to get it how I'm living. I'm going to walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby